Jonathan Taylor um, and Jim Ursay pretty much are on different paths on pretty much because of the uh, running back controversy and what's been going on. Uh, Jonathan Taylor had some comments about what Jim Ursay had to say about the whole, again, uh, hide, pretty much hiding behind the NFL's Players Association um, contract and things of that nature. And he commented, being Jonathan Taylor commented. And then Jim Ursay fired back. Apparently, they both met up, had a meeting during training camp. And in a, in a bus, t- in a bus too. Like, so it was like really close quarters. They're like just chopping it up on like a little, uh, a little bus. And what concluded from that was Jonathan Taylor requesting a trade. And pretty much you could tell from that trade request that he was, they were not on the same page whatsoever to the point where obviously he still is under contract and he's not even willing to wait until that contract is up to sit there and say, all right, I'm going. He's just like, no, I don't even want to be part of this organization anymore. Um, just off of that, before I get any further, do you think that relationship is worth being rekindled? Do you think he can go back to work and try to still play for the Colts? I think based on some of the things that Jim Ursay said, I would say no. Because mm-hmm. when you say things like, you know, not was he right when he was saying if I die tonight and you're out of the NFL, they won't think about us tomorrow. When he when you mm. say things like that, I mean at the end of the day it's factual, but you're dealing with people. And so I think when you're dealing with people, specifically people that want to get paid, you have to be a little bit uh more touchy and more sensitive about those issues. Because at the end of the day, Jonathan Taylor's trying to feed his family. Also, Jim Arcey is a multimillionaire in the hundreds of millions of dollars type of aspect. And so he's kind of out of touch when it comes to the person who's just trying to feed his family. And all, where Jonathan Taylor is like the, I, I, I'm assuming his net worth is single digit million dollars. And I know we see this like, wow, crazy, but it's a different type of wealth mm-hmm. between the two. Uh, so Jim Marce has that he has that uh, privilege to say something like that. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, business is business, and Jonathan Taylor just wants to get paid. I guarantee you right now, if the Colts extended an offer that was in the range that he wants, as far as in a um, extension, mm-hmm. he'd be happy. He'd be he'd be out there on the practice field tomorrow. I think it's about money. It's not personal. Uh, I think he could get past Jim Ursay being a little bit ignorant to uh, what he wants. But someone, go ahead. I'm not gonna go too deep. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not gonna go too deep. That's why well, I, 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 I agree with the whole. Like I said, business is business. I do think of getting if, if they offered. The, the the money to him that he was requesting or demanding, I do think he would take it. Um, I also, based off of history, in my opinion, I think Jim Mercer is a fucking dickhead. Um, I think he's a little greedy bastard and he doesn't really know what he has when it's in front of him. Um, and this is getting just based off of history. Um, obviously, my main thing is just the whole Peyton Manning situation. I don't think he handled that the best. I get Andrew Luck at the time and all that. Um, but again, the way he handled it and the way his his he spoke about it. Again, I feel like in the business world and in general as a as an employer, I don't think you you have to you have to be cautious of what you say and how you say it. And I don't think he's cautious of that and he really doesn't give a fuck. Um Well, I'm, and I think I, I, let me let me cut you uh not cut you off, but well, I'm gonna cut you off. Just because I, I too expect that because, of course, we're talking about the same Jim Ursay that was driving under the influence. The same Jim uh, Ursay that they found bottles and bottles of pills that he wasn't uh, subscribed to and didn't have a subscription to in his car. We're talking the same Jim Ursay that routinely gets drunk throughout just team activities and always smells like alcohol. That's the same Jim Irsay we're talking about. And so mm-hmm. I think it's unfortunate that even though we give it, uh, the NFL gives exceptions to owners like that, 
that there's no sympathy when it comes to players just wanting to get paid. Not even talking about conduct stuff. But go ahead. No, like I said, that's that's just that's who he. I think that's his personality. So I don't. Uh, I think in general you can't. You can't. Uh, you can't judge him based off of that. I don't think you could criticize him based off of that. I mean, that's just who he is. But in general, do I think Jonathan Taylor? I mean, any team would would fucking trade. They want like a, a high. They want pretty much a first round pick for him or a second round pick. I think if I'm being uh, if I read correctly, it was like a second round pick is the minimal. I would throw a second round pick to go get him. Fuck yeah. I, I I think any team would 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 love to have him. Um, so that that part, I mean, he'll have a market. That that's nothing to worry about. It's just a matter of if Jim Ursa is going to do it because he also commented and said he's not willing to trade him or he's like, I'm not talking about this. He's been he he's going to be here in October. He's going to be here now. He's going to be here in October. So it's just, I mean, if he sticks to it, if the offer is pretty enough, maybe he'll say fuck it and and pull the, and and pull the trigger. But other than that, it's just a matter of, I mean, if he's going to stick by his word or he's just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to cave into this demand. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I think if I'm Jonathan Taylor, I wouldn't ask for a trade because essentially the team that trades for you has to be ready to offer you extension or you're not going to play for them either. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of limits the number of, uh, of teams that's going to trade for you. And because he just wants insurance... I, I think what I would do is I would say, okay, you're not going to pay me now. You're not going to give me extension. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to ball out this year. Okay. And if I'm even somewhat hurt, I'm not playing. <laughs> it, even if it's the smallest thing, like shin splints, like I'm not playing. If it's a bruised calf, I'm not playing like anything in the simple, the smallest things, right? What I, and I would ball out as much as I can before I get hurt and then next year when I'm a free agent I just leave the team and I get the highest number I can and I go from there because I also think that a lot of teams and players are at a standstill because everybody's trying to figure out what is the running back market mm-hmm. it's like a, it's like a, a a western standoff yeah who's getting paid what are you worth it like everybody's trying to figure what that is so I think it's kind of bad timing for Jonathan Taylor too, you know, and who's gonna get shot first? So <laughs> I like that. I like that. that. That was a perfect analogy. I like that. Um. Oh yeah, you said you were gonna take it further. What was there anything else? What? Oh, what do you uh, what do you think about the the injury rumor stuff that got put out? Like. It just it had came up about his back and how he came up to training camp, and that he was hurt, and that he denied gonna... it. He denied everything. He was just like that's bullshit. He 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 denied it immediately. Like the moment they put out stuff saying, um, they was gonna put him on the, the non injured reserve list yep. or some shit like that, and he was just like, yeah, that's not happening. I'm not injured. Um, I'm I don't know what the hell they're talking about. So he made it seem like he was gonna play, um. Especially because they he would it would be without pay if he's on that list it's it's without pay and that's his probably his main shit is like yeah that's not happening if y'all gonna make sit there and say oh either I play and I get injured and 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 then I still get my money or I sit there going this listen I don't get my money I'm gonna play just like you said exactly what you just said I'm gonna sit there when I do get hurt I'm not gonna force the issue but no I I, I definitely think he he's he's gonna get his bread I ain't worried about that he's gonna get his bread as he should. Well, it makes me think that, like, the Colts are already playing dirty. Like, between the owner being up front and now you're playing games with the media and pretty much already threatened to get ahead of the game of if he does get injured, what they're going to do. Yeah. And so it seems like, so pretty much if he threatens with the injury to not do training camp, they're pretty much already gonna go ahead and keep try to keep a salary from him. I it's, it's just thirty games, man, and the Colts just give me. And if I'm if I'm Anthony Richardson, bro, I'm looking at this like, is this really the team I want to be with long term? When you know, Facts. when my time comes Facts. around to get paid, if I'm Facts. other players, I'm looking around. But I think this brings up a subject, and I'm not trying to drag this out too long. Was that? When players, specifically not good players, I'm not talking about Jonathan Taylor because he's obviously talented and a great player. 
when players start asking for more money in almost in an almost weird way it's hurting the team and i didn't think about this because i always thought about oh the owners got money they'll pay him but obviously nfl teams are on salary cap mm-hmm. so if you have a player asking for more money in order for you to get paid somebody's not going to get paid or somebody's going to get cut to create that cap space mm-hmm. or that, that cap salary so you take it you take it from somebody else you are which is a crazy way to think about it, man. Like, mm-hmm. we really don't think about it like that. We just think, oh, he just want to get paid and things like that. If I'm looking in the locker room, not the Colts locker room, but just in general, and there's people asking for money, it's like, damn. Like, you really trying to take money away from me or the next guy or, you know, the the... 52nd 53rd man on the roster like you taking away a job essentially I, I agree with that I do like I said I, I, I do not when I hear big contracts the first thing that goes to my mind is not well it is the what they're making their annual uh average salary is yes the second thing is the the dead cap because again that's essentially what the the salary cap that that's what hits the salary cap so when that number is one person is 36 and they only get 150 or 120, dude, start doing the math on that. One, you're talking about one person hits 30 and he, most of these is quarterbacks and shit. That shit hurts. And that's what now, again, is the, the biggest effect. That's why when you hear people like Patrick Mahomes taking a pay cut, that shit means something because it's just like he knows he needs talent around him to win. He knows he's great, but he needs talent. And to hear that, more and more people are requesting more money. Like you said, that's going to be higher debt cap on them eventually. So I, I, I get that. I, I, I think that naturally. And like you said, that's mostly what owners are thinking. But again, it's not. that's why you don't give that to any and everybody. They have to be selective on that. And that's why I feel like they got to do a better job of. That's it. 